On a cold spring day in the tiny town of Hillsville, an enormous tragedy took place inside this courthouse. The Hillsville Courthouse Massacre of 1912 left five people dead and led to the electrocution of a father and son. It is a case that shook this community to its core and made international headlines. And it's a story that continues to be debated and investigated to this very day. Nobody really knows what happened. He was at times a bully. He didn't mind a bit taking matters into his own hands. They accounted for 57 shots being fired in the courtroom. The story is compelling. People love to hear it, whether they're from here or not. You put heels on the map. If there was an exact moment that would dramatically alter the lives of those who lived in this tiny, sleepy town, it would be during the early morning hours of March 14, 1912. What happened inside this courthouse that day was tragic, not only for those involved, but also for those who loved them. It's a story that has become legend here, told and retold in oral history and mountain lore. But it's a story only told behind closed doors, for even today, more than a hundred years later, people here still won't talk about it. This whole subject has been taboo in Carroll County for decades. The school division years ago had a rule that you couldn't bring it up in the schools uh, because you had factions from both sides who were still very, very bitterly divided about it. To this day, there are individual reactions to the story. People were either part of the Allen group or they weren't, and they still feel that way to this day. People either love the whole story of the Allens or they hate it, and that reverberates through the community in a, in a way that you wouldn't think after a hundred years has passed. Floyd was a rather high-tempered individual. One person who will talk about it, Carroll County native Ron Hall. He grew up hearing stories of the tragedy and ended up writing several books from what he learned. He told me the story over a diorama of the courthouse that fateful day, a story that centers around one man, Floyd Allen. To understand Floyd Allen, you have to understand the time. 1912 rural Southwest Virginia was characterized as lawless and wild. Many had a disdain for the law, and Floyd Allen, a wealthy farmer and shopkeeper, had the reputation as a tough character with a quick temper. He was from a large family who had quite a bit of influence in county politics, and they were quick to defend one another. The Allens were quite popular um, in certain circles. Uh, it was said that uh, if Floyd Allen liked you, he was your best friend, and if he didn't, he was your worst enemy. He would often have confrontations with the law and wasn't afraid to take matters into his own hands. And on March 14, 1912, he was tried for doing just that. People really came and packed the courtroom in anticipation of seeing what Floyd Allen was going to do because he had a reputation. So people came for a show. People came for a show. And they got one. And they really got one. Hall describes uh, what happened that day in front of the diorama, which shows where those involved were believed to be located inside the courtroom that early morning. A tiny courtroom packed with over 100 spectators. Spectators who would witness a total of 57 shots fired in just under 90 seconds. And it all started over a kiss. And the tradition was, uh, when you're shucking corn, you find a red ear of corn, you get to kiss the girl of your choice. Well, Wesley found the red ear, and uh, he kissed the wrong girl. It was at that corn shucking party in 1910 when Wesley Edwards, one of Floyd Allen's many nephews, would kiss the girlfriend of one of his rivals. The next day, Wesley and his brother would get involved in a fight with those rivals and would be charged for assault and other crimes. To protect them, Floyd Allen told the boys to flee to North Carolina out of the reach of the Carroll County law, a move that angered the sheriff, who had the boys arrested and sent deputies to get them. By having one set of handcuffs, uh, they handcuffed one and tied the other of the Edwards boys in the buggy and set off toward Hillsville. They could have taken the Ward's Gap Road, which would have been the best road in those days, but instead, uh, Samuels came up what became Highway 52. A road that ran right in front of the homes of Floyd Allen and four of his brothers. 
Some people surmised that the county was kind of rubbing it in the Allen's faces. Furious of how those boys were being treated, Floyd stopped that buggy and freed his nephews, but not before allegedly pistol whipping one of the deputies, a move that would put him on trial on March 14, 1912. The day of the trial, this courtroom was packed, and remember, it was 1912, so a lot of people were armed with their own handguns. Now, the judge in the case, Judge Massey, was encouraged to disarm everyone before the trial began. His response? I'm here to prosecute, not persecute. It would be a decision that would later seal his fate, his fate along with many others. How many people had guns on them? Uh, probably about 14. Really? Know of. Guilty as charged, and they sentenced Floyd Allen to a year in jail. When the sheriff stepped up to take him into custody, Floyd stood up and says, gentlemen, I ain't a going. That's when the gunfight happened. A single gunshot and then chaos. Shots rang out from all sides of that packed courtroom. Bullets catching victims in a crossfire between the Allens and court officials. The shooting went from the courtroom, down the stairways, and into the streets. A melee that lasted nearly two minutes. When it was over, five people lay dead or were dying. The judge, the prosecutor, the sheriff, a juror, and an 18-year-old witness. The deputy clerk, Dexter Good, would be celebrated as a hero that day, as he was able to wound both Floyd and Sidney Allen before they fled. Floyd's last two shots back at him lodged into the courthouse stairs, the holes still visible today. A massive manhunt would eventually bring the Allens in within weeks, and several of the Allens would be tried and sentenced to jail. And on May 18, 1913, Floyd Allen was convicted and sentenced to death in the electric chair. His son, Claude, would soon follow. While the events of the shooting may be long over, to this day, the debate continues over who fired that first shot in the courtroom. Was it Floyd Allen, one of his family members, the sheriff? People can only speculate. In my opinion, the sheriff fired the first shot, but I believe it was accidental because he had a pistol that he didn't know anything about. It was an automatic and they were brand new in 1912. And uh, the witnesses said that uh, when he pulled it out of his pocket, he caught on his handkerchief and fired. Many here in Hillsville will say this story is gone and buried. However, new documents that shed some light on that infamous day and the trials that followed have just resurfaced. One man's quest to know more about his grandfather's connection to the shootings has uncovered documents that have remained unseen since the days of the event and could offer new clues into what happened that fateful day and the weeks after. But I knew that um, in doing my research in the courthouse in Wythe County, the penultimate document, I oftentimes refer to it as the Holy Grail, was in fact indictment number one, mm -hmm. which was that forcible rescue indictment. And nobody had ever seen it, you know, nobody since the days of the trial mm -hmm. uh, it had been missing. Why was it so trials. important? Why was this like the Holy Grail? Bereft of this document. Mm -hmm. There's no indictment, there's no trial, there's no shooting. Howard Sadler is a local resident whose grandfather had ties to the courthouse shootings. His research into his grandfather's involvement would turn into a two-year quest to learn more. Among his discoveries, documents that hadn't seen the light of day in decades. His story tomorrow, right here on Daytime Blue Ridge.